Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello dear students, 50 to 70 billion cells are dying and getting replaced every day. And what is this process whereby the cells are dying? This is a many a times it is a special type of cell death and we call it as apoptosis. Today we will look at this suicidal cell death. We look at what it is, where it occurs, when and why. And we will also look at how this process happens. We will also look at how the cells look like in apoptosis. This is a unique type of cell death and today let us get geared up to draw the curtains to this orchestrated drama of events which we are going to look at and witness. Now, what is apoptosis? In Greek, the word means falling off or dropping off. How do you pronounce the word apoptosis? As I said, it is apoptosis. It is not apoptosis. It is the falling away or dropping of either petals or the leaves from a tree. If you look at that tree there, only some cells, few cells are dropping off. It is a unique form of cell death and we would say that it is programmed cell death. To give the definition as to what apoptosis is, it is a specific type of cell death which involves single cells or small groups of cells induced by a series of regulated events and the cells all require enzymes to be activated that degrade the cell break up the cell and it is an energy dependent process. Now to see why cells undergo apoptosis. If you just think of that there are a lot of causes where there are cells which are unwanted. Unwanted cells, useless cells or cells which have done their function, they are taken away by apoptosis. It can occur in embryogenesis, in various hormone dependent processes, cells after inflammation and also in certain self reactive T cells. We will look at these things in a little bit more detail. In the formation of the embryo from that single cell to the time the baby is born in various steps of the organogenesis, in the differentiation of the tissue be it in the formation of a male or a female child, the, how the various reproductive systems form in the various process of development, then when the involution of the tissues occur in old age, all these involve apoptosis and many a times they are dependent on hormones and there may be a genetic control in added on into them. Just for us, if you just look at the normal limbs. The limbs and digits are normal because of apoptosis. If not, we would have had just hands which are without any digits. The digits in the hand are because of the process of apoptosis. And if this process was not normal, we would have been like ducks with webbed feet and webbed limbs. And when an abnormality happens, that is like when we get in syndactyly. Hormone dependent cell involutions occur in thymus and in various organs. An example in the female itself, at the various process in the female itself, the shedding of the endometrium in menstruation, the changes that occur in the breast with 
uh, puberty, then with lactation. And when the lactation is done with weaning, the cells all, the breast cells all come back to normal, that is by the process of apoptosis. The involution of the uterus, the atrophy of the uterus at menopause is also by apoptosis. To look at other causes, the lymph inflammatory cells like neutrophils and lymphocytes, one they, once they finish their function, they are lost or they are removed by apoptosis. Similarly, when cells become harmful or lymphocytes become self-reactive, then again they are eliminated in time to prevent dangerous effects. Now to look at pathological causes when the cells are damaged. When the cells are damaged because of DNA damage like would occur in uh, radiation, chemotherapeutic agents, hypoxia, formation of free radicals, in all of them when the DNA is damaged those cells have to get removed and that is one cause for specific cause for apoptosis. In that even P53 is very much involved. Then in various virus infections, an example is autoimmune or acquired uh, immune deficiency syndrome or HIV, where the virus affected cells are destroyed, the CD4 cells are destroyed and we have a turbulence happening in the immune system because of that. In neurodegenerative diseases, accumulation of misfolded proteins can be a cause of apoptosis because these cells in Alzheimer's or Parkinson's disease, they have to be removed, these proteins are removed by this process. Now with all this, what I would like to say is apoptosis in all these conditions is induced or it is facilitated or it is increased. I say so because we have to be very aware of diseases or conditions which can be very sinister with decreased apoptosis. For example, neoplasms. Neoplasms are occurring because of failure of apoptosis. The loss of the tumor suppressor gene P53 causes the mutations to accumulate, the cells to accumulate and proliferate and we get neoplasms. In autoimmune diseases too, the failure to eliminate very harmful self-reactive lymphocytes lead to autoimmune diseases. Viral infections. We talked of viral infections increasing apoptosis, even they can be reduced in some conditions like human papilloma virus, EB virus infections, which act as anti apoptotic agents and which block apoptosis and they have the freedom to proliferate in the body. Now going on to how apoptosis occur. We will look at the mechanism of how it occurs. We are we have already looked at the various triggers or causes for apoptosis. So the various triggers lead on to the next step of initiation by various signals, execution where there are regulatory proteins and caspases involved and then there is the disposal of all the dead cells by macrophages and we will have to look at few regulators of apoptosis also. I will quickly go through these steps. There are various triggers that we were talking about. Growth factor withdrawal, DNA damage, misfolded proteins, T cells which are activated, cytotoxic cells, virus infections, all of them. So whatever is the cause, in various ways they get the initiation or initiation is done by the either the intrinsic pathway where the mitochondria is involved or the extrinsic pathway where the death receptors are involved. So these are the two pathways in which the initiation occurs. Whatever is the cause, most of them lead on either to the intrinsic pathway or the extrinsic pathway. In the extrinsic pathway, either the fast receptor or the TNF receptor, tumor necrosis factor receptor are involved. And in the intrinsic pathway, the mitochondria is the main area where all these things happen. The mitochondria is the main locus where these changes happen and the main change is the cytochrome C leak. And in that regulators from the BCL2 family are there which regulate this process of mitochondrial initiation and then it goes on to the stage of execution. 
for execution the main enzymes that are required are the caspases they cause the cell death or the cell killing the execution that has to happen and subsequently the debris has to be disposed of when we just look at the regulators as i mentioned the bcl2 family are the full group of regulators they are located on the mitochondrial membrane and there are various types of regulators we have the pro apoptotic proteins which are the bags and the bad and also the anti apoptotic proteins like bcl2 and bcl xl there is normally a balance between the two of them so when apoptosis has to happen the pro apoptotic proteins are more active and the anti apoptotic ones are sort of decreased or suppressed so as a result of this in the mitochondrial mitochondrial or the intrinsic pathway cytochrome c is leaking out it is released and then we get the activation or the initiation by the mitochondrial pathway looking at the execution the key enzyme there are the caspases the caspases the caspases can be the initiator caspases which are different for both the pathways and then we have the executor caspases which are also of different types the initiators activate the executioners and then the cell is broken up when the cell is broken up what is actually breaking up the cytoskeleton is breaking up and then the dna or the nucleus is breaking up and for that endonuclease is very important with execution the next thing that happens is the disposal so nuclear fragments and cell proteins are there but they are all not scattered around they are all wrapped up in lipid membranes these pieces are wrapped up in lipid membranes and then these bits they form blebs on the cell surface and they are marked when i say marked what actually it means is they are targeted or there is a signal on them which tells them that they are to be phagocytosed or they are ready to be phagocytosed so that basically happens by a change in the cell membrane where where some proteins come to the front and these marked cells or these marked bits or what are called as apoptotic bodies are phagocytosed by macrophages or adjacent cells now all these things happen with without anyone else knowing without another cell knowing around it and there is no reaction or tissue uh, inflammation that is happening around it now that was the mechanism of apoptosis now to just look like as to how an apoptotic cell looks like what is the morphological changes that you see in an apoptotic cell coming to the nucleus the nucleus is shrunken it is small we call it as pycnosis the nucleus is fragmented that means it is broken up into small pieces we call it as karyorexis the cytoplasmic changes the cytoplasm shrinks it reduces in size and there are cytoplasmic blebs that are forming on the surface of the cell membrane now these cell organelles they are all packed into membrane bound vesicles and those are what we call as apoptotic bodies and these apoptotic bodies are what makes the cell what is at the end and they are phagocytosed now just to give an example of the changes that we see in the microscopic feature of apoptosis this diagram shows the normal skin but it shows one cell that is very prominent shown by the arrow which is very dark pink in color very condensed and you can see the fragmented nuclei inside so that is an apoptotic cell similarly you can see another cell also in the skin which is also very shriveled up irregular very much contracted which is an apoptotic cell but what we need to notice is that all the cells around it are absolutely normal and there is no inflammation no reaction anywhere around it except for that one cell which we can identify so that is the beauty of this process of apoptosis where the only the single or the few cells are killed now we've come to the end to just summarize this whole process of apoptosis 
from a normal cell. We said that this process of apoptosis is also called as programmed cell death. And we looked at various causes, many physiological causes that are there in health as part of development and growth and various pathological conditions where we see apoptosis. And once with any of these causes, there are pathways that they go into either the initiation by the extrinsic pathway or by the mitochondrial or the intrinsic pathway. And once that is done, there are regulators of the BCL2 family which help in the mitochondrial pathway and then the execution is done by the different types of caspases. That is very important, the caspases. And that goes on to destroy the cell so that the cell breaks up, the nucleus becomes separate, divided and the cytoplasmic cytoskeleton becomes divided and we get the cells which are shrunken with the apoptotic bodies which we looked at in the morphology. And these apoptotic bodies are then disposed of by phagocytosis by the macrophages. So, that is the summary of programmed cell death or apoptosis. So, just before I wind off, just to bring about the other important type of cell death that is there that is necrosis, which is very different, which is also very common, but the key thing that is different there is that while apoptosis involves single cells or small number of cells, here large groups of cells are involved. Usually it is apoptosis is energy dependent while necrosis is De deprivation of energy and there is inflammation in necrosis all around you can see in the picture where there is a lot of mess that, is ha that has to be cleared up while nepotosis is just single cells that are dying. And it is like if you are just to summarize the whole thing, it will be like how you would throw or dispose garbage out of the window. Like if it is garbage in a garbage bag, it is apoptosis. If the mess or if the garbage is just thrown out of the window, you can imagine what it would create. That is what necrosis is. So, that sort of uh, gives an, uh, an understanding of these two very different types of cell death. Now, there are newer terms that are there, newer methods of uh, apoptosis that are there or uh, com combination of apoptosis and necrosis, which maybe we can look at a later time. Thank you.